to the mighty one, unto the righteous one. Hallelujah. God, we love you today, God. We adore you in this place, God. God, we say yes to whatever you want to do today, God. Yes, Lord, I'll do it, oh God. Yes, Lord, I'll be. 
the King and the Lord of Lords. We say yes to the King. We bless you. We bless you. We bless you. We bless you. We know oh God, we love you. And we thank you again for being who you are. We thank you again for your love and kindness toward us today. We thank you that you called us blessed to be a blessed home. We thank you that we are above and not be oh God. We thank you, God, that we can do all things through you, oh God. We thank you, God, and we love you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now I'm going to call Sister Karen with the scripture. Hallelujah.
Lord God, for the journey that is set ahead. Give them new revelation in the name of Jesus Christ. Cover them from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet. And anything that the enemy has planned against them, we cancel it now in the name of Jesus Christ. We cancel it now in the name of Jesus Christ. We declare that they are blessed coming, they are blessed going, they are blessed coming, they are blessed going. Hey, hey, hey. 
your hands if you serve a good God. Y'all know this, so I'm going to ask y'all, y'all just sing it with us. Come on, put your hands together like this.
on, can we give God praise just for who he is? Not even so much for what he's done, but for just being God. Hallelujah. At this time, we're going to ask that you just go across the aisles and that you hug someone. I know we came in in shifts, so you just hug someone that you didn't see when you came in. Give them a big smile, a big hug. Tell them that you're happy to see them. Hallelujah. Tell them you're amazing. Hallelujah. Anyone other than me made a vow one day that I'm never going back. Ever. I'm never going back. Hallelujah. I'm going forward. I'm going to keep moving forward.
want to give God some praise. Hallelujah. with him and life transformation. We believe in the Great Commission as written in Matthew 28, 18 through 20. We strive to empower believers by teaching life principles, marketplace strategies, and relationship development through the Word of God while promoting fellowship, family, and a spirit of excellence. Amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord. First and foremost, we want to welcome you to the city, to all of our in-person and online attendees. We thank you and we appreciate you for joining us today. Um, our weekly announcements are as follows. Each and every Sunday at 2 p.m., we do have virtual Sunday school with our very own EP Stephanie Guy. That is via a Zoom link. So if you want that information, please screen capture and join in. Sunday worship experience every single Sunday, right here at the HD Sound Stage at 3:45 p.m. We actually are in person, so if you can make it to the soundstage at 3525 I Street, we would love to have you here. However, if you cannot make it, please join us online via Facebook or YouTube. Amen. Also, every Monday, we have our Monday Momentum with our very own Apostle Washington. Amen. We like to get our, our week started with some momentum and prayer. So we, we declare every week and we see the manifestation of God each and every time, amen? We also have our birth and board build corporate intercession every morning with our very own overseer, Naya in Washington. It is at 6.30 a.m. via club, Clubhouse or the conference call line. On Mondays and Fridays specifically, it is also live on Facebook. So please join in. Also, each and every week, we have our E-Church Bible study on Thursday evenings, amen? That is on Facebook as well as on YouTube, and it is facilitated by our very own leaders, overseer, and apostle, amen? Now, also, the up-and-coming events that we have coming on. Tomorrow is March the 25th. March the 25th is our very own overseer's birthday. 
She will be turning 42. So we want to wish her a very, very, very happy birthday. If you're online, drop those happy birthdays in there for her to see them. We want to celebrate her loud and proud. Amen. She's going to be turning 42. And in case you didn't know, she's carrying a miracle. <laughs> Amen. Also, April the 5th through the 7th is right around the corner. And we are very excited because we will be having our 2K, 2, 2K, 2O conference or 2K conference. At the end of the day, we're going to be having a time in the Lord. Um, it is also known as our very own Holy Convocation. It will be taking place at Rainbow Christian Center in Washington, D.C. If you have not registered, please, please, please go on to CityDwellersAssembly.com and register there because we want to be prepared to be able to host everyone properly. Amen? Also, our very own Elder Lightsey has been nominated. <laughs> exactly, get excited. See, we believe in celebrating those. We do not allow you to have honor in quiet. We give honor publicly and loud and proud. Amen, amen, amen. So our very own Elder Lightsey has been nominated for the Kindred Award for Female Gospel Artists. The voting polls are open and we want everybody going on over and voting because we are anticipating a win. Amen. All right, so there is a QR code that you can scan and vote, vote, vote. Also, this Saturday, this Saturday, March the 30th, our convocation praise team and choir will have its final rehearsal for convocation. It's going to be from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m., and it's going to be under the direction of Minister King and Myers, and the rehearsal will be at Rama Christian Center. If you have any questions, you can reach out to him or email admin at citydwellers.com. All right. Also, in regards to convocation, for those of you that may be traveling down from this area or if you are traveling in, don't forget to secure your hotels if you have not done it already. Please make sure you go in and secure your hotels. The room block is already done, but there are still some rooms available. Please do not wait until the last minute like some of us and get your room. <laughs> Amen. Um, also, Hope City on April the 21st will be having a water baptism. If you are interested in being baptized, that means going down in that water and coming up a new creature, right? If you need to be baptized, make sure you sign up in the back. But if you're online, you can also sign up on hcechurch.com. H as in hope, C as in city, E as in empowerment, church.com. Make sure you go on there. Um, all are welcome. You do not have to be a member because this is not about membership in our church. It is about membership in the kingdom. Amen. So we want to make sure all are welcome and come and participate. May the 10th and 11th. Our very own Naya Ann Washington, our overseer Naya Ann Washington, she will be hosting the Women Become Women's Conference, guys. It's going to be held at Rayma Christian Center at 1825 Michigan Avenue, Northeast in Washington, D.C. And that is going to be something that you also need to register for. There are room blocks available, again, if you are traveling. Please, please, please visit NiaWashington.com to register and to book your room, okay? We have some additional fundraisers that we constantly have going on, and we're going to every week mention them because we want to make sure we keep our eyes on the prize. And the biggest prize right now is we got to move. So we have a coin drive that you can participate every week going to take those coins that we have in our pockets, our jackets, 
the bottom of those purses. Make sure you drop them in during the offers time. We also have sew your size. This is a challenge where you can sew any size that is applicable to you, whether it's clothing size, hair length, shoe size, whatever you feel, you can sew that into the kingdom of God. We also want to remind our leaders about the hopes is here streaming, gift streaming, I'm sorry, where we are asking all of our leaders to sew $1,000 or to partner with someone that is not a leader and also give, come up with that $1,000 because we want each leader to be responsible for raising or gifting $1,000. And that is going to be for our building fund because we are out of here. Amen? Amen. Lastly, on behalf of our executive board, we would like to wish each and every person that has had a birthday in this last week a very, very, very happy birthday. If you are watching online and you also celebrated a birthday, please drop it in the comments so we can personally wish you a happy birthday. Amen. And that is the announcement. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. We're going to do it till it's a party. Praise the Lord, everybody. That's a greeting. Now it's a command. Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. And I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Come on. There's a lot of things that should upset me, but look at your neighbor and say, he's made me glad. I have a few reasons to be frustrated, but he made me glad. I have a few reasons to be angry, but somebody get indignant and say, he has made me. He's made me glad. He's made me glad. I'm excited about the presence of the Lord today. I want to establish protocol. Everybody in the building scream and holler and yell for one of the best pastors on the entire planet. Do it till he can hear you. Do it loud, loud, loud. We want to give the Lord praise for our presiding prelate, the senior pastor of Hope City Empowerment Church, the lead pastor of Raymond Christian Center Church in DC, and the presiding prelate of City Dwellers International Assembly, His Grace, the most eminent apostle, Cameron Washington. We honor the Lord for the one that stands beside him in the person of overseer Naya Ann Washington. And you ought to scream real loud because she got a birthday tomorrow. Hallelujah, we give the Lord praise for Kaylin and Peanut, the little bundle that they're carrying. Clap for your neighbor for the Ministerial Council of Hope City Empowerment Church, for our musicians and our media team. For our greeters and our finance team, clap for the babies. Clap for our visitors that are watching online. Clap for our international family. Clap for yourself because you made it another week. Clap for your neighbor because they did too. And because today is Palm Sunday, and because we've only come with one agenda, and that is to lift up the name of Jesus. Come on, do it for our Savior. Come on and do it for our Savior. He rode in on the back of a donkey. They did not know he was a king because of his posture. But what he rode on didn't change who he was. And what they did to him didn't change who he is. He is still the king of kings. He is still the Lord of lords. He is still the Lion of Judah. He is still wonderful. He's still a counselor. He's still the everlasting father. He is still the prince of peace. He's still a provider. He is still a white man. He's still a healer. He's still a keeper. And look at somebody and say, and he's still coming back. I said he's definitely coming back. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. The thing that excites me, gather your seeds. We're getting ready to take our offering and hear from the woman of God. I got to tell you, one of the things, as a, as a nerd, as a reader, as a scholar, as one of those people that loves to study all kinds of things, my minor in college was religion. 
And the reality of it is, is that there are a lot of beliefs and uh, systems of belief and faiths that have an immaculate birth. There are a lot of faiths and religions and school of thought, schools of thought that are based on peace and love and being kind one man to another. There are a lot of religions and schools of thought that kind of surround this premise of this sort of triune Godhead sort of figure. And even in a lot of these religions, we can see throughout the course of history and time, it teaches us that a lot of those same figures die. Uh, all of them, as a matter of fact. And there are a few that right now today believe in reincarnation and they believe that their leaders have been reborn and so for them that is a sort of resurrection and we'll get to that next week but the thing that sets us apart they don't talk about it no more it's one of them touchy uncomfortable churchy subjects but the thing that sets us apart the thing that makes us iconic in this world is that not only did he get up and not only did he ascend, two things he did. He sent a comforter and he gave a promise that he was coming back to get us. See, Buddha left his believers here to deal with it on their own. Confucius left his believers here to deal with it on their own. Muhammad and Krishna, Daddy Grace, Father Divine, all died and their believers are here to figure it out on their own. But look at somebody and say, my Satan didn't leave me here to fight it by myself. And one day when things have gone as far as they can go, one day when you least expect it, he is going to do the thing that sets him apart as the supreme ruler of the universe. Pass it down your own and say he's coming back. He's coming back, he's coming back. He did not leave me down here without a hope and a future. He's coming back for a church. Without a spot or a wrinkle, behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, we shall be changed. We'll, we'll be quickened. Somebody, I still got my quickened. I said we'll be quickened. And we're going to be caught up. I said we'll be caught up. Today we celebrate Palm Sunday. And next week we will celebrate the resurrection. 50 days after that we will celebrate Pentecost. But every day when I look up towards heaven, I'm always ready to party because he is coming back for me. I still believe. We're getting ready to get our seed. We put our seed decree up. Tithers, if this is your week to tithe, if this is your week, even if you are joining us online and this is your week to give your 10%, we want you to gather in the left aisle. We believe in telling our money where to go and what to do when it gets there. We decree over our seed in Hope City. So we're gonna put our seed decree on the screen and we're gonna read it in concert. Are you ready? Let's go. Today we give by faith and honor our giving as service unto the Lord. We believe this house is a blessed house and by giving into this house, we receive the blessings of this house, pressed down, shaken together and running over. We declare our bills are paid, our debts are canceled. We praise God for unexpected blessings, checks and rebates, supernatural increase, favor among men, bodies healed and a wealth mentality. In Jesus name, if you believe it, clap your hands as we prepare to receive. Can we do this real quick? Can we do this? I love Jesus, he is my savior.
giving, those that gave their tithes, those that gave their offerings. Father, we ask now that you would bless the seed and the sower. We ask, Father, what you don't return in money, do it in healing. What you don't return in finances, do it with an open door. What you don't do in finances, do it in protection. Do it in creative thoughts and ideas. Thank you, Father, that you're doing it in divine partnerships. And Father, thank you even that you closed the door with the seed that we planted today. We thank you now that it will reap a harvest that will be undeniable. In Jesus' name we say it is so, and it will not be reversed. We are preparing our hearts now to hear from one of the most astute and eloquent women I have ever had the opportunity to know. That's right. It is one thing to hear from preachers who know the word. It is one thing to hear from preachers who can teach the word, but it hits very differently when you hear from preachers who live the word. Where the word of God hit and the tenets of our beliefs and all of those things paint their lives. Pastor Anika V. Brown is an emblem of holiness. Clap loud. And let me tell you how I know I'm not talking about perfection. I'm not saying that she is perfect. I'm not saying that she doesn't make mistakes or have bad days. But when I talk about holiness, I'm talking about that thing that makes you want whatever it is she has that keeps her smiling no matter what. You understand? I'm talking about that quality that makes her gentle and astute, but firm so that you know that she's not to be played with, but not so hard that you can't make a mistake and come and say, I need help. We are living in a time where the kinds of trauma that has been caused in church has turned people away. But I am grateful that among us, in all of these seats, but I'm talking about her in particular, the love of God is so evident that it is magnetic, but not so much that it draws you just to her. It draws you to that thing. She points you to God at every turn. How are you today? I'm blessed. How are you doing? I'm favored of the Lord. Well, I'm having a hard day. Well, Father and Jesus, like it's just, it's just straight to that. There is a practicality in her teaching that doesn't make it unattainable. But there is a precision about it that makes you know that you probably got to study a little bit more. And for all of that to be encapsulated in one person is a miracle by itself. So we're going to stand in deference to her office as a pastor in the Lord's Church. And without clapping, without cheering, and without getting sort of caught up in applause, I want for the next couple of moments, musicians, come on, I want us to offer up a worship to the Lord. If you really believe that the Lord is going to move today, if you know that there is a world-changing word in her mouth, if you know that what you have prayed for this week is laying in her belly right now, if you know that there is a miracle hidden in this vessel that is about to be released. Come on, I want you to turn it up a little bit more, 60 more seconds. Let's prepare the room for a change. Let's prepare the room for a powerful move. Let's prepare the room, the room for deliverance. Let's, let's prepare the room for ways made. Let's prepare the room for answers. Let's prepare the room for solutions. Come on, lift it. Lift the worship, 30 more seconds, press in. Tear open a portal in heaven so that the word and the glory of God can flow freely in the sanctuary. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hey, hallelujah, hallelujah. I would ask that you would sit, come out of your tent doors, open your heart. Prepare your mind and your spirit to receive the word of God from our pastor of administration in the person of Pastor Anika Brown. Hear her with gladness. Come on and clap as she comes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Giving honor to God, who is the head of my life 
without him, I don't know where I would be. Giving honor to our leaders, Apostle and Overseer Washington, in their absence, to my EP, my Deborah. <laughs> I thank God for you all. All of you play a, a special role in my life, and I give God praise and honor to have known you all. Amen. Amen. I'm truly humbled and grateful for another opportunity to share with you today what the Lord has given me. And you all should know that I'm not a long-winded speaker, not at all, but my goal is always to give you exactly what the Lord says and take my seat. Amen? All right. So with that, let's turn to our scripture for today. Uh, John chapter 12. And we're going to be reading verse 12 through to 15. John chapter 12, reading verse 12 through to 15. If you have it, say amen. If you don't have it, say wait on me. Okay, we're good. Let's read together. On the next day, much people that were come to the feast, when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, took branches of palm trees and went forth to meet him and cried, Hosanna, blessed is the king of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. And Jesus, when he had found a young ass, sat thereon, as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion, behold thy king cometh, sitting on an ass's colt. Here ends the reading of God's holy word. The word is already blessed. Let us pray. Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you for this time that is set apart for us to eat the word and to digest it. Lord, I submit all my faculties to you. Let flesh take a back seat now so the Holy Spirit can have his way. Let the hearers receive and transformation take place. Now let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. You may take your seats. <clears throat> my brothers and sisters, for a few moments, I would like to speak from the topic, the fight is already fixed. The fight is already fixed. And if you don't mind encouraging your neighbor early, just let them know, the fight is already fixed. Amen. My assignment is to highlight the significance of the entry of Jesus Christ and the meaning and revelation behind a few of the detailed activities that took place in this very scene. And I know we have been in the series of March Mindness, and I will tie that in even with this Palm Sunday message. But let's backtrack uh, and get a better understanding of what is happening here for those who are unfamiliar with this story. Now, first, let me say that the book of John was written to spark a believing faith in its reader. And uh, if you struggle with your faith and you want to get a clearer understanding of who Jesus is, this book is the one that is suggested that you dig into. Now, all the Gospels were written to make known the story or the timeline of the life and ministry of Jesus Christ. Two of the reasons why he came was to show us how to live a godly life or to be an example of how we should live here in the earth. And you can read that in John chapter 13 and verse 15. And he also came to die for us. And in that, the door to salvation was open for all of us. Now, you may have heard this before, but it bears repeating. There are four Gospels, three are synoptic, which means their view and content of the story was similar, but they're four canonical, meaning that they were all accepted based on the canon law and included into the sacred books. Now, John, however, is not synoptic because some of the information in 
uh, the other Gospels were not recorded in the book of John. Now, his focus was narrow and to the point, not wrong. Narrow and to the point, which I can relate. I am just going to give you the most important information, and then I'm going to take my seat. So it's like saying John was not a long-winded speaker or preacher, right? So here we find ourselves in chapter 12, six days before the Passover celebration. And this is important to note because it is the countdown to him being betrayed and eventually go to the cross. Jesus is now in Bethany, which is about two miles from Jerusalem. Bethany is important to note because this is where Lazarus was raised from the dead. And that miracle made the Pharisees even more nervous about what's going on, which is evident by their anxious questioning of what to do because Jesus was working too many miracles. And you can find that in John chapter 11 in verse 47. Now, if I could just stick a pin right there and let you know the fight that you're facing today is not necessarily because you did something wrong. It's the fact that you are doing good and the fact that you're working in your purpose and in the power and authority that the Father has given you. And this fact is grieving the enemy so much, he's going to concoct and set up and all different schemes and traps to stop what you are doing. Trying to discourage you and to throw you off track. It is important to know and understand this because you've been beating yourself up, some of us, beating ourselves up, trying to figure out what did we do wrong? Who did we offend? Why these attacks are coming from the left, from the right, from people who we don't expect it? You didn't do anything wrong. You're unwavering yes to God and yes to his plans and yes to his purposes for your life. That has lit a fire to the tail of the enemy. And if he's uncomfortable, he's coming after you. He is. But don't worry, the fight is fixed. The fight is fixed. In this very chapter, we see Mary anoint Jesus with the very expensive spikenard oil or the alabaster perfume as some may know it and here we see once again that a good deed incited an attack and the heart of Judas was not postured right and the enemy got access to it now two things I want to point out here and one is a repeat it's not that you did something wrong while the fight is happening is that you are the center of a good thing that is changing the lives for the glory of God. Jesus did not ask the lady to do this. His ministry impacted her, and that was how uh, she decided to show her appreciation. The second point here is that it's never about the person that is being used as a host hotel for the devil, don't see the person as the enemy, Judas in this case, but see the spirit that is working in him. Remember, the fight is not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual wickedness, right? Now, here's a fact for you that will help you to see that your fight is not against the body or the person that is attacking you, but it should be against the spirit that is behind it. Judas. Let's talk about him. Judas got mad about the perfume that, at his estimation, was worth 300 pence. And again, you can find all this in John chapter 12. All right? And when he, uh, when he says 300 pence, we can go with that estimation because he was the one handling the money. So he was the financial advisor for the ministry right? But here is how you know that he was just a host hotel used by the enemy. And this is true for the people coming against you, right? He got mad about 300 pence, but he settled for 30 pieces of silver. Now, here's what my research revealed to me about this. There are four different types of silver coins 
that were available in those times. And the Bible doesn't say which type he was paid, but let's go with the most valuable type of silver coin that he could have gotten, right? And that is the Athenian Terra Drachum. Yes. <laughs> and you all know I love biblical history, so you're going to get that, right? So the Athenian, like Athens, yeah, the Athenian Dredgem was the most valuable silver coin that he could have gotten. Now here is where it doesn't make sense and you should know that he was not himself operating here. Being that we know he was good with money, like there's no way he should have settled for that. Because Jesus would not have placed him in charge of finances if he wasn't good with money, right? So 30 pieces of silver is equivalent to 120 days wages using the most valuable type of silver coin that he could have gotten. The perfume that he got mad over was worth 365 days of wages. Make it make sense. Make it make sense. He settled for 120 days worth of wages and the thing he got mad over was worth 365 days of wages. That savvy financial advisor wouldn't have gotten mad if he was himself over a bottle of perfume and go settle for coins. That's less than half the value of the perfume. Didn't make sense. And this is when we can use the escape statement that says, the devil made me do it. The devil made me do it. Yeah, the devil. I mean, it had to be. It had to be. It just had to be. And I know you have seen this in the battles that you face, that the one that you helped when they were down, and now they have sided with the very ones that were laughing at them while they were down. Like, that doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. The one that you opened the door for now sold you out and left you to suffer. It doesn't make sense. You were the best thing to them until they got mad about your decision to go higher and do better. Now they're the one initiating the gossip thread. It just doesn't make sense. It had to be the devil. It had to be the devil. So I want you to know that being under attack is never about the host body, but about the spirit at work in them. Yes. And as the scripture says, the weapon of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty in God to the pulling down of stronghold. Jesus never argued with Judas. He never did. He took his issues into prayer. He never argued with him. So your job is not to fight the flesh and blood that is fighting against you, but to understand the spiritual fight that is taking place. Now, here we are in verse uh, 12, and Jesus is now making his entry into Jerusalem. The very well-known triumphal entry. That is preached every Palm Sunday, right? But as my title says, the fight is fixed, we are going to look at this scene and taking into account all the attacks and the conspiracy that have been mounting against Jesus up to this point. The word has gone out from the Pharisees that they're looking for a way to take him down. But I want to let you know today that because of what Jesus did and even with this very act of him entering into Jerusalem, it's an indication to the enemy that is scheming against you that the fight is already fixed. No matter what, you will triumph over him. No matter what the attack is, you are victorious. How do we know that, you may ask? As our apostle teaches us about... Uh, the law of repeat. All through this very chapter, the common theme we see is that of prophecy and fulfillment. If you are a writer, the term that you may understand or that may make sense to you is that of foreshadowing, which gives you an idea of how things will end. But here's the law of repeat and how we know that 
Listen, your future is already written and the fight is already fixed and you get the victory. Here's the law of repeat. Verse 14 closes by saying, as it is written. Verse 16 says, these things were written for him. Verse 17 says, it mentions bear record. And verse 38 says, that the saying of Esaias, the prophet, might be fulfilled. So there is a theme of prophecy fulfilling. I want you to hear Hear me and hear me well. Your victory is already written. The fight is fixed and you win in the end. Jesus' entry into Jerusalem was him entering the ring to fight for you, to fight on your behalf. If there is anything that I know is the fact that he still reigns, he's still undefeated. He is still the undefeated champion. And as I heard a prolific preacher said that he only went down for three counts and he was back up claiming the victory and leave us with the victory, right? And we will leave his getting up for next week. What I want you to know today is that his entry into Jerusalem was an entry into the ring to fight for you. Yes, to fight for you. And who better to be your tag team partner than the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the great and dreadful God, the Lion of the tribe of Judah. Who better to be your tag team partner than Jehovah Gabor, the God of war. Who better to be your tag team partner than Jehovah Saboet, the God of angels army. The fight is already fixed and you get the victory. You get the victory. And here's another predictor for you if you are still not sold on the fact that the fight is fixed. And I'm here to tell you that you get the victory. And I'm almost done. You know I don't speak long. Like, I just, I just give it to you and then I'm taking my seat. Verse 13 says this. They took branches of palm tree and went forth to meet him. In Matthew, it says that they laid their clothes and branches down before him. If you look up the phrase palm branches in the Bible dictionary, you will find that the palm branches are symbols of victory. Symbols of victory. Talk about foreshadowing. Symbols of victory. Tell your neighbor the fight is already fixed and you get the victory. You get the victory. I told you this chapter is centered around fulfillment of prophecy and what was already written. So it is for you. The victory is for you. It's already written. You will triumph over the enemy. The battle is already won because Jesus stepped into the ring on your behalf. He has heard your cry of Hosanna, which means save, I pray thee, keep, preserve. He heard your crying to be saved. He heard your cry to be rescued. And he has stepped in the ring on your behalf, and the fight is fixed. Now here is the March Mindness piece for you as we continue in this series. Having a growth mindset requires change, but this is the only time having a fixed mindset is acceptable. Fixing your mind on the fact that the fight is already fixed. And based on the prediction, you win in the end. You are triumphant over the enemy. You get the victory because Jesus entered the ring on your behalf. The fight is already fixed. The king has entered the ring, and verse 15 says... Fear not, daughter of Zion. And I want you to make that personal. Fear not, Anika. Fear not, Pastor Guy. Fear not, my brothers and sisters. Thy king cometh. The fight is already fixed. It's already fixed. It's already fixed. I know the battle gets hard and it, it gets hot sometimes. But tag Jesus in. Tag him in. Tag him in and let him fight for you. And settle in your mind that the fight is fixed 
and you get the victory. The palms are already laid out. The symbol of victory is already on display. It's up to you now to settle in your mind that the fight, yes, the fight is already fixed. Jesus has sealed your victory when he stepped in the ring on your behalf. I want you to put your hands on your chest. Put them on your chest. Close your eyes and declare to yourself, the fight is already fixed. And I have the victory. I have the victory. Settle it in your mind today that Jesus has entered the ring. The palm branches are displayed already. Displayed already. The fight is fixed. You get the victory. You get the victory. Just settle that in your mind. Settle that in your mind. The king has entered the ring on your behalf. He is fighting for you, and you get the victory. God bless you all, and thank you so much for your time. Amen. Oh, come on, you can do far better than that. You can do far better than that. That was so much powerful information. You see what I'm talking about? I got to go home and read about the different kinds of coins and all of that. It is poor manners to preach behind the preacher, but may I offer something in addition, not instead of. The funny thing about a fixed fight is that the audience doesn't know it. Did you hear me? The tricky thing about a fixed fight, and let, let's explain, a fixed fight means essentially that the outcome has been decided before the match began. Somebody in a powerful position said, hey, I want you to win and they were able to convince the other person to take a fall because of their decision. But normally, that kind of arrangement, glory to his name, happens behind closed doors. Because if the audience members were in on this, they would not pay their money to see it. Huh? So what I want you to understand is that while you know your fight is fixed, you have to be okay with the people that are expecting for you to fail. They paid for their seat without knowing that the outcome had already been decided. So I don't want you to get upset. We don't do a lot of talking about haters. We that's not even real. But the thing about it is that they have no idea. And if you really want to talk about it, for those that have ever watched those old movies, most of the time, neither do the fighter. Glory! I said most of the time, even the fighters don't know that one of them has already been predetermined as the victor. It's between the ones that are watching over them that have decided, hey, I want my fighter to win. So whatever I have to do to you to make that happen, I'm fixing the fight. I'm not repairing the fight, I'm preparing the outcome. Most times when we hear the word fix, it is often used to talk about a repair. But in this sense, it's talking about preparing an outcome. So you may have to take a few bruises, but it's fixed. You might lose a little blood, your eyes might get a little swollen, you might lose a tooth or break a rib. You may walk away with some scars and some proof that you've been in here fighting, but look at your neighbor and encourage them the way Pastor Anika did and say, neighbor, oh neighbor, your victory was determined before your enemy even knew it. There was already a victory assigned to you. Can I give you Jeremiah? Before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you and I set you apart, called you out. Tell somebody, this was determined before I even knew my name. I had victory before I had a name. I had victory before I had an eye color. I had 
had victory before I had a heartbeat. In the imagination of God, the victory was given to me before the problem. You preached a mighty word today. You preached a mighty word today. We don't believe it. And I think sometimes we address this scripture with a little bit of casualness, but I read somewhere in my Bible, now thanks be to God. Come on, Hope City, and finish it. Who gives us the victory? I heard it on an album a long time ago that the battle belongs to God, but the victory belongs to me. The fight belongs to God, but the overcoming belongs to me. The sickness belongs to God, but the healing belongs to me. The generational curse belongs to God, but the freedom belongs to me. Grab your neighbor by the hand and encourage them and say, neighbor, the victory is still yours. I don't care how hard it might seem, it is still yours. I don't care how dark the night may get, it is still yours. Why? Because Jehovah Gabor is not fighting with me. He's fighting for me. I said he's fighting for me. He's going into battles I could never fight. He's fighting for me. Tell somebody, encourage your neighbor and say he's fighting for you. He's fighting for you. In the courtroom, he's fighting for you. In the doctor's office, he's fighting for you. In your emotions, he's fighting for you. In your bloodstream, he's fighting for you. The God of war is getting ready to drench his robe in the blood of his enemies, and he is getting ready to hand you a victory without a fight. It's going to be sweatless. You won't have to break a sweat. You won't have to cry no tears. Tell your neighbor the victory is mine. And it's mine today. I don't care when the battle ends. The victory is mine today. I don't care when the battle is over. The victory is mine today. If you believe it, lift up your hands, open up your mouth, and praise the God of war for winning a battle on your behalf. Come on, do it. He's fighting for you. The God of angel armies, he is sending angels to fight for you. Jehovah Gabor is sending angels. He's sending Michael, the warring angel, to fight on your behalf. You will walk away with the victory. You might cry, but you'll be victorious. You might be tired, but you'll be victorious. You might be wounded, but you'll be victorious. You might lose some friends, but you'll be victorious. You might be misunderstood, but you'll be victorious. You may be hurt, but you'll be victorious. You may be by yourself, but you'll be victorious. Now say it again, now thanks be to God. Who gives us the victory? He gave it to me. He gave it to me. He gave it to me. I said he gave it to me. I didn't have to buy it. I didn't have to bribe him. I didn't even have to earn it. Simply because he's God and I belong to him, the victory inevitably belongs to me. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to his name. I received that for myself. There are battles that some of us can't even talk about. There are things that we face in our private life and in our emotions and in our mental health that we can't tell that we can't tell anybody. But lean on somebody next to you. And I want you to say it with conviction. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, God is about to give you the victory, even in the secret places. Oh yeah. Monday through Saturday, when we have to do life on the regular. Monday through Saturday, when we have to watch our responses. Monday through Saturday, when we open the mail and there's a shutoff notice. When we don't get to hide behind his presence and we don't get to put on a mask. Tell somebody who don't believe it. He's getting ready to give you victory in the private areas.
You might fight in private, but you're gonna win in public. You might be on your knees fighting in private, but he's getting ready to give you a public victory. Let them keep their seats. Let them watch on pay-per-view, on Facebook, and on Instagram. Your private prayers are getting ready to produce a public victory. And if you really believe it, you ought to be standing on your feet, lifting up your hands, and glorifying the Father who is above all and in all, and who gave you the victory. Tell me who can stand before us. When we call hey, hey, on that great name, I have victory because of his name. I said I have the victory because of his name. Somebody just shouted one time, Jesus. That's all it takes. I put his name on everything. Victory is inevitable. He has to do it. He has to. I may not like his methods, but the outcome has already been determined. Victory in every area. No questions asked. Victory in every area. Clap your hands one more time for a prolific word. I received that. Hallelujah. Learning about Judas and he was a he was a host hotel. Huh? He was a host. Because one of the gospels says that at the table that Satan entered him. Is that the Bible? All of the gospels don't say that. But one of them, as Jesus is at the table and they're having that moment, whoever dips with me and that whole thing. And the scripture says, and Satan entered him. And he went out and did what he was supposed to do. Isn't that funny? That the area he was good at was the area that he was used. It had, look at your neighbor and say, it had to happen. It is written. It happened the exact way it was supposed to. Yes, sir. So let that be an encouragement to you. We're getting ready to open the doors of the church. But let that be an encouragement to you, my brother and my sister and those that are watching. Every now and again, this might get a little hard. But I want you to understand and know full well that this is happening as it was written. Your story was written eons and eons ago. You were a thought in the creative mind of the Lord God Almighty. All of this was written. It was planned out. And I don't know about you, but I'm looking forward to an extremely happy end to the story. Tell somebody it ends in victory. I don't care what it looks like now. I don't care how much rain is falling, how gray the clouds might be. This, hold on, this ends in victory. If you believe it, lean on your neighbor and encourage them. Come on, this might be the only contact or encouragement they get this week. Jonathan, it ends in victory. Say it across the room, yell at somebody. It in victory. Find a camera and say it to our online family. Hey you, I don't know how it started. I don't even know how it feels in the middle. But a promise is a promise and this will end in victory. Ain't no other way. They're just part of my vernacular. There ain't no other way. It has to. It must. Why? Because I said so. Victory in my family, in my finances, in my money, in my emotions. Victory in my body and in my mind. It all ends in victory. Take that with you this week. Because words like that are going to be tested. The enemy is going to test your belief. Oh, really? Take that. Right? That's not to scare you, it's to make you aware. Cause he don't have no new tricks. He's not creative, right? That's, that's, not his, that's not his area. So he's not gonna do anything new. 
He's going to find something old to frustrate you and try to uproot the promise that you were reminded of today. But all week long, as we lead up to one of the most victorious moments in the history of anybody, it ends in victory. After a word like that, if you are in this room or watching online and you have been pricked in your heart and you want to partake in this imminent victory that we're talking about, the doors of the kingdom of God are open to you. It's a simple prayer. It's a simple moment. The Bible says that if you accept the Lord Jesus by confessing with your mouth and believing in your heart that Jesus Christ died, was buried, rose from the dead and ascended and now sits on the right hand of the Father until that great day where he will rapture his church, you are as good as saved. And I don't mean saved as in, uh, well, yes, I mean both. Pre saved as in preserved and saved as in rescued. It is a lifeline being thrown out to you. And it's as simple as saying, Lord, I believe. If you are backslidden, if something has wedged itself between you and the Lord Jesus Christ, and you have lost your confidence in him or in your belief or in his power, that doesn't even have to be sin. It can be doubt. It can be disappointment. Being a backslider, yes, that leads to things that are sin, but for the most part, the door to open that is being let down. If disappointment or lowered expectations have started to grow between you and the lover of your soul, this moment is also for you, for the scriptures declare that he is married to the backslider. He is committed to you. If that is you, either in this room or in the comments, we offer Jesus Christ to you. There is always room at the cross, and there is room for you. The blood still reaches to the highest mountain. It still flows to the lowest valley. This room is full of people who it gives strength to from day to day. And the best part about it, it doesn't have a shelf life or an expiration date. It will never lose its power. If you have found that Hope City is somewhere that you know you can plant and grow, if the love shown in this church has pricked your heart and if the safety that we exhibit is something that you want to attach to, either joining us in the room or joining us online, you can put that in the comments and one of our ministry leaders will reach out to you and we welcome you into this family. You don't have to be perfect. Just come. He will perfect you in his time. Our job is to love you until then. If all hearts and minds are clear, everyone stand to your feet. We're getting ready to go home and we're going with the victory. I don't know how you came, but you're going home with the victory. I used to say that growing up, they would tell us in church, I don't wanna leave with nothing I didn't come with. But I'm making an exception today. I wanna leave with the victory. And if you are feeling that same way, I want you to slip your hand into the hand of the person next to you. We're getting ready to pray and dismiss. Again, we thank God for our leaders. We thank God for Overseer Washington as she prepares to celebrate her birthday tomorrow. I am so grateful that we're celebrating birthdays and not planning funerals. I am so glad that we're planning celebrations and not writing obituaries because the enemy had a plan, but God had a purpose and that trumps everything. You are holding the hands of a victorious person. And as we prepare to pray and leave, I do not want you to pray for yourself this time. Pray that the victory we feel right now follows your neighbor home. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you for the opportunity and the privilege of being in your presence. Father, somewhere around the world, people are huddled in, in holes and in caves and in closets and in secret rooms, worshiping you in private, but we have the privilege of crying loud and sparing not in public and on the internet, and we do not take it for granted. Thank you for the victory. Father, as we leave this place, but never your presence, I squeeze encouragement into my neighbor's hand. Chase them with victory this week. 
Let it meet them on their jobs and in their homes. Let it meet them in their emotions and in their thoughts. Father, we are asking even now that you would flood their quiet moments with the memory of victory that was achieved in the room today. Bless this preacher that illuminated your word for us. Pour back into her oil and wine as she poured out so eloquently and made us understand that this fight was already fixed. Thank you for our apostle and for our overseer. Thank you for their family. Cover, keep, and bless them. Thank you for a healthy pregnancy, full term, and nothing wrong. Thank you, Father, for every family that's represented here and those watching online. Cover us as we leave this place, but never your presence. Go with us and stand by us. And as we come together, Father, next week to celebrate your resurrection, remind us that the victory belongs to us because the fight belongs to you. We praise you and we give you glory. And it's in Jesus' name we say it is so. And it will not be reversed. Hug your neighbor, hug somebody you didn't come with and say, neighbor, the victory is yours. You are dismissed in Jesus' name. Go in peace.